could a French chateau put an end to our renovation project? We're in the region of Normandy in northwest France, not so far from the beach. And across those waters there is the UK and England. So not very far from my country of origin. We're here because, uh, because of our story. We met in the French Alps. I lived and worked there for approximately 10 years. I was working as a chauffeur and doing airport transfers Marion worked in a local bar and restaurant and she served me beer when I wasn't working. After a while we decided to move in together and she served me beer while I wasn't working, this time at home. The United Kingdom decided to leave the European Union, so I applied for residency in France. Then the pandemic hit and they closed the ski resorts and for two years I had no work. That was a pretty tough time, obviously not as tough as it was for a lot of people, but relatively speaking for us it was a bit of a challenge. And we decided to close that chapter on our lives and open a new one together and buy a property. We had originally envisioned doing that in the French Alps, but the price of uh, land and the price of, of uh, buildings, even barns, old barns for renovation, is three times the cost of what it is here, at least. So we decided to uh, hire a van and do a few trips across France to move up here and live out of my van for 90% of the time. And soon after that, we found uh, the property that we're in now. It's close to a city, where Marion works and it's close to England and it's a beautiful place. So that's the region and why we're here. Tricky question. We're risk takers by nature. We met in a ski resort and we love skiing and I could tell from the way that Marion skied that she was a risk taker. <laughs> the French system as it is is quite attractive, especially for me as an Englishman. We got a very low uh, percentage rate on our mortgage, under 2%, fixed rate. The renovation budget, that's a bit of a trickier question. We have a certain amount that we will be putting towards the bigger jobs, things like the roof, the drainage out the back of the house, the stonework, the stuff that we need to make it, you know, weather tight and, and good. We've kind of got the money put aside for that. So although we only have a, a budget which will cover the roof and the most important matters of urgence, we do have enough money coming in to be able to inject cash as we go along. Besides that, we're chasing up incentives offered by the state. There are zero percent loans that we're looking at. They're there to incentivize better uh, house economy and fuel efficiency. But the devil's in the details with these because they do tend to cost a bit more up front. You have to spend a little bit more on better materials or government approved materials to be able to access the zero percent offer of the loans. And because of the way that our house is, half of it is deemed livable, half of it isn't. 
that actually means that these 0% interest loans and other things that we would like to take advantage of actually only are available for half the house where it makes sense to actually do the roof for the whole back of the house not just the half that we live in so yeah there's sort of there's government regulations about how we spend the money and how we can access money how much money we can access and how we can deploy that money on the house so it all gets really complicated quite quick and then this is further complicated by the chateau issue which we will get to Well, anything is possible in terms of time because that's the thing that, well, the thing that I have most of, to be honest. This is the home renovation project and that's a very important part of what we're doing because it's a, a long-term project to build a home. And a home isn't just pulling nails, building floors, and uh, doing structural work. You know, a home is, is a place to feel comfortable and a place to live. And we want to kind of nurture that as we go. So for example, we maybe won't buy the access equipment that we need for the interior of the house because at the moment we want to focus on the garden. We're not professional builders by a long shot. It's not about turning around the renovation really quickly, or it's not about flipping the house to make money. It's just about the journey and the experience and enjoying it, calmly enjoying it, however terrifying it could be at moments. In terms of money, we have the big expenses such as the roof and drainage and those fundamental things that we need to sort out but it doesn't go to a schedule of building works like someone who was doing it for a profitable experience may do it. It goes for a schedule of our experience of living in the home, of what it can give us and what we would like to do, you know? So that's, that's where we go. That's where we kind of put the money the little bits of money. Eventually it will come round to everything being sorted in the long run as you know we we move around doing those things. That doesn't mean that it will stop me trying to do things that I want to do. It just means that I, you're going to see some footage of me doing things with maybe not the right tools for the job. Uh, and yeah I accept that people will think that's crazy or you know will maybe give me advice not to do that but but you know it's our home and that's that's where we choose to spend our money is maybe on one part of it and not the other part at this particular stage but that doesn't mean I'm not going to continue to try and do something with every single part if that makes sense I think this becomes incredibly apparent when you watch the videos because do have a tendency to go from one thing to another thing. So from the garden, then into the house, then to the back of the garden, you know, then to the drainage issues. And it skips from one thing to another in each, each video that I make. That's because they're all small stories which I wish to savour and, and share with you. Although obviously the destination is really important and I look forward to it, but the journey is, is just so valuable. And I suppose I think about it as a careful documentation of our project as we slowly edge closer, learning as we go on the way. But I understand that it's not maybe everyone's cup of tea. Quite frustrating because, you know, a lot of these renovation projects is, is you get hit with a you know a big reveal there's no big reveals in what we're doing not in the moment that's going to be a while before we get to that stage but you can say that you're early very early
So the French system, as you may know, adores dossiers. Adores big dossiers of information. Uh, compiling documents is possibly a national pastime for the French. Marion's very good at it, so I'm lucky. In the 10 years or so that I've been in France, I've learned to despise putting them together. I think some part of it is the technical language, which, like the French language in total really, is quite often confusing and a bit illogical. And then there's the endless back and forth to actually make sure that your dossier is formatted in the correct way that they expect for that particular agency or government department. <laughs> so it's all like uh, kind of, yeah, it's detailed and takes a long time. We have a number of dossiers that we're putting together. There is the, the dossier for the Marie, which is the local council and that's to obtain a permit just to do the exterior renovations. We also put together a dossier for each line of credit we go for which is where it gets a little bit more complicated because it depends where we're deploying the credit, you know, what materials we're using to do that, how much en energy efficiency we win from doing that particular renovation and also it gets more complicated because we have a habitable half of the house which is like the taxable half of the house but the other side is counted like it were a barn or an outbuilding and so if we're asking for a zero percent loan towards making that livable it doesn't really wash with them because they say well that's not you know it's a it's a renovation project it's not just your home where you're living. Somewhere behind our house is a chateau. We can't see the chateau from our house and the chateau can't see us. But we fall within the catchment area of the chateau and that means that there's strict regulations about how we can alter our property and we of course have to put a dossier together it's actually under the jurisdiction see, of the architect uh, of France what it is is it is approving the materials that you can use and, and making sure they fit with the aesthetic within the area of the the chateau Unfortunately, we've been led to believe by quite a number of people that they do have a ability to make you use particular materials and if you don't, they have a veto on the work. So, for example, it might be that you have to use the original uh, roof tiles or maybe wooden windows or particular stone in the any landscaping that you might do in the garden. Again, anecdotally, we hear that it's often the more expensive materials. And this is why this really does possibly in the long run cause us a problem. Because if we find we're in a situation where we cannot actually make exterior changes to the property, for example, put the velux in, in the roof that we're planning, or replace the window with something more economic in the back of the property. If they're saying that we need to make those out of oak, for example, you know, however much we would love to do that, it's probably going to be beyond our means or in the short term it is. And that would really leave us in a pretty tricky predicament meaning that we wouldn't be able to continue with some fundamental parts of the renovation, at least not for a very long time. And as the property needs renovation desperately, we don't have the time to wait for those fundamental things. The architect of France can take a long time 
to get back to us and approve those things. So, yeah, the chateau could impact our renovation project. But I doubt it will stop us. We'll find a way around it. Right, so talk, quite a talky video today, but thank you for watching. I hope you've got a lot out of it. Love it if you subscribed, and if you subscribed already, just give us a like. Thanks, cheers.